Welcome to the NCDPI World Language Quarterly Update, the first one for the 2019-2020 school year. It is Wednesday, September 18th, and we're glad to have you with us. Today's agenda um, was, we'll start with a welcome and overview. We'll also share some news to use from the national, regional, and state level. Our feature this year is what we call PD, or Professional Development to Go article, and that article for today is going for 90% plus, how to stay in the target language. Then we have some reminders and resources at the end, and we always um, finish off with any questions you have. My name is Anne-Marie Gunter. You can see my picture there on the screen. I am your World Languages Consultant at the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, or NCDPI. And I've designed these World Language Quarterly Update webinars to be a time for us to talk about any information relevant to all of our World Language programs, details for specific programs, updates on international, national, regional, and state initiatives, and information to be shared with World Language teachers on a variety of topics about implementing our state standards. The um, PD to go resource that we're sharing today um, can be used in local professional development, and we'll talk a bit today about how you might do that and um, share some ideas on how we're going to do that. So that's it for today. Let's get started. I do like to find out in the beginning why you're here. So what are your goals with today's webinar? And you can check all that apply. Are you a teacher leader sharing information with colleagues? Are you an administrator gathering materials for local presentations? Are you an educator earning a contact hour for license or renewal? Are you an individual getting a question answered? Or do you want to remain anonymous on a Wednesday afternoon? I'll go ahead and run the poll. We do have a poll feature embedded in GoToWebinar. It works like most audience response systems. I'll launch the questions. You can click on your responses. And this is a check all that applies. All right, it looks like we're almost done. If you haven't put your vote in yet, now is the time to click on the, the responses that match your reasons for being in today's webinar. I can look at who all has voted, so I'm looking to see that everyone's participating and no one's struggling. Looks good from this side. We'll take about five more seconds so you can finish up deciding on your votes. All right, thank you for sharing. I'm going to go ahead and close our poll and then share the results with you because everyone is probably curious about what that showed. So it looks like well over half of you, 61%, are here because you're an educator earning a contact hour for licensure renewal. Contact hours to accumulate for a CEU can be earned by those who participate in the live broadcast of webinars in the World Language Webinar Series. Today's webinar is one hour long, so one contact hour or 0.1 CEUs can be earned. Please save the email receipt you receive from the GoToWebinar system to document this contact hour towards a CEU for licensure renewal. This is a content activity for world languages, and please note that local LEAs or districts and charter schools must approve professional development offerings. In addition, a recording is being made of today's webinar, and the archive, including these slides, will be available for local training approximately one week from today. These materials can be used as professional development resources locally with contact hours documented by the district or school. So you have that freedom as well. Also, those of you who are waiting on that receipt and that certificate for a contact hour know that I have set the system to send that out about two hours after we finish today. So look for that in your email box tomorrow morning. All right, let's go back to our results. We also have over half of you, 52%, saying that you're a teacher leader sharing information with colleagues, and that's why you're here today, uh, as well as about 12% of you who are administrators gathering materials for local professional development. Please know that in addition to all the materials being available to you, much of what you hear me sharing, um, I also have in the notes portion of the slides, so that should make it easier if you're wanting to share this information with others so that they have complete information and can go directly, for example, to websites where there are details about applications and, and grants and scholarships um, that you can fill out online. All of that's included in the notes. 
There are also 12% of you who are an individual getting a question answered, and I hope we'll answer the question for you, um, or at the end, we'll have time to discuss individual concerns, of course, as long as we need to. And there, is, there are at least one or two people who said they want to remain anonymous on Wednesday afternoon, and that's good too. I hope you are enjoying this week. Um, we are now um, almost a month into the school year, and so hopefully you've got routines set up with your students and things are going smoothly. All right, so let's begin then with our news to use, um, particularly the national and regional. And I always like to share this so that you're aware of what's happening for world languages around the country and in our region, um, as well as um, what you might be available to uh, access or use in some way to enhance your professional practice. So we're going to talk today about the ACTFL Convention and World Languages Expo. We're going to discuss a little bit about the NADSFL Annual Meeting. We're going to talk about the NCLC call for proposals, the Nestle scholarships, and the SCOLT conference. I know that's a lot of acronyms, but don't worry. They're explained on the slides that follow, and some of you are probably already familiar with these acronyms. Let's start with our news to use. ACTFL, the American Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages, is our national professional organization. The ACTFL Convention World Languages Expo that takes place every year is happening in Washington, D.C. this year, November 22nd through the 24th. For details about that, you can go to um, that ACTFL website you see posted there on the screen, and there's a schedule of events and the online convention program and other things that you can reference uh, that you see coming up there on the left-hand side of your screen. That's where all the information is about our ACTFL convention. Also news to use for the ACTFL convention, I want to share a couple of funding opportunities with you. The first is the ACTFL Student Stipend Award. Um, ACTFL sponsors the Student Stipend Award program to provide financial assistance in the amount of $100 to post-secondary full-time students in a college or university. This hopefully helps offset the ACTFL convention registration costs or other expenses related to attending the convention. Um, there are several applicant requirements. Uh, obviously, you must be a member of ACTFL. Uh, you must be registered at the full convention registration rate at the time you submit your application. You do have to provide proof of full-time student status, um, and you cannot be a recipient of the first-time attendee or new teacher scholarships that ACTFL offers that were due this last summer. So there's additional details in the notes, but interested students can apply online by this Friday. If you click on that link that says ACTFL Student Stipend Award, that's underlined, obviously, you can go right out to the web page that has more information about that. Also, for us here in North Carolina, there's a funding opportunity available that I want to make sure you're aware of. The NCDPI, um, ESL and Title III sponsorship, applies for the ACTFL Convention. Specifically, uh, this is funding what, that you can apply for to receive registration costs plus travel and lodging to attend a professional learning activity in November. That can be either ACTFL, the ASCD conference, or the LACOSECHA conference, but I'm sharing it with the ACTFL information today for you. This sponsorship is focused on supporting English learners, or ELLs, like students who are in heritage language programs, what used to be called native Spanish, Spanish programs or um, native speakers programs. They're now called heritage language programs in our state standards. Or two-way dual language immersion programs. That's often where we see English learners in world language programs. There's several um, details about this particular sponsorship if you want to apply, and you can see all of those in the 2019-2020 NCDPI Sponsored Activity slide deck, and that link on the slide works directly, and then of course the link is also in the notes. You can apply online by Thursday, October 10th for the NCDPI ESL Title III sponsorship to go to ACTFL. The deadline of October 10th is for all November conferences, and that's why I'm sharing it with this ACTFL convention information today. Next up, and, and to some degree related to the ACTFL Convention, is the NADSFL Annual Meeting. NADSFL is the National Association of District Supervisors of Foreign Languages. I know some of you are probably in those roles, either officially and working in your central offices uh, for your districts or charter schools, or unofficially as a teacher leader, um, helping to manage things for your, your school or programs across the district. So I wanted to make you aware of the NADSFL Annual Meeting. This is a great professional development opportunity for people in those roles. It's November 19th to the 21st, and so if you remember when the ACTFL Convention was, it's the three days just before the ACTFL Convention begins. 
So it precedes the actual convention. It is in the same location in Washington, D.C. And the 2019 theme is We the People, Many Languages, One Voice. For details and registration, you can go to the website that's posted there on the slide, nadsful.org slash annual hyphen conference. So that's all available to you as well. Next up um, is some information I want to share with you about the NCLC, or National Chinese Language Conference. The National Chinese Language Conference will be held in Orlando, Florida in May of 2020, as you can see it on the Save the Date on the screen. But right now, there's a call for proposals at that conference. Um, if you'd like to lead a session, the session being a 60-minute session, then you can submit that by Sunday, October 20th. The success of the National Chinese Language Conference is built upon the innovation, best practices, and shared experiences of educators and administrators in the field. Um, you can take a look at that, um, though the instructions, the online proposal submission form on the link you see there. And as a session presenter, you have the opportunity to share your knowledge and experiences, gather valuable feedback from peers, showcase your educational programs and partnerships to a national audience, help shape the agenda for the of the Chinese language education community, and you also receive a discount on your NCLC registration fee if you are accepted as a presenter. Like I said, those requests for proposals are now open through um, Sunday, October 20th. Next up is an opportunity for students that we wanted everyone to be aware of. The Nestle Y scholarships um, are available for the 2020-2021 school year. Uh, Nestle Y stands for National Security Language Initiative for Youth, and these are a series of scholarships to study language abroad. The, these are for high school students, specifically ages 15 through 18, and they must have a GPA of 2.5 or higher on a 4.0 scale. The Nestle program was launched in 2006 to promote critical language learning among American youth. The U.S. Department of State, in cooperation with the American Councils for International Education, awards and administers merit-based scholarships to high school students for participation in both uh, summer and academic year programs abroad. These scholarships are available to study eight different languages in various countries. Um, you see the eight languages on screen. And if you want more details in the application, you can go to www.nestleforyouth.org, as it says on the screen. Um, we have been reminded to uh, caution you that the application is fairly extensive, so it's good to get started early, but we have a long time uh, before Wednesday, October 30th, when this, these applications are due for these scholarships. So I encourage you to share that information with your students or students who might be interested. We have had North Carolina students go before, and they've gotten quite a bit out of the experience, as you might imagine, with a study uh, abroad opportunity like that. All right, next up is our SCOLT conference information, and this is kind of a save the date. SCOLT is a Southern Conference on Language Teaching. It's our regional professional organization. ACTFL is our national one, and SCOLT is our regional one. And so the SCOLT conference is always in the spring. It will be March 26th to the 28th in Mobile, Alabama this year. Um, it features, amongst other things, 50-minute uh, sessions for both K-20 language educators and research-to-practice sessions for scholars or researchers. There are also pre-conference workshops on March 26, either half or full day. If you want to see more information, like the registration rates and details, they are posted on the SCOLT conference webpage at scolt.org slash conferences. And so I encourage you to go there and check out that information, uh, as well as look at the other opportunities. And again, there's a lot of information in the notes here that you can find online as well. All right, that brings us to our poll question about our national and regional news items. I'm curious, which of the national and regional news items are you going to follow up on, either individually or for others? You can, again, check all that apply. Are you going to take a look at the actual convention, including the scholarships that are available, the NADSFL annual meeting details, the NCLC call for proposals, the Nestle scholarships for study abroad, or the SCOLT conference? So I'll go ahead and launch that poll question so you can answer it like you did before. Remember, you're just clicking on the things that you are going to follow up on a bit and get more information on.
All right, looks like almost everyone's done voting. Go ahead and put in your last votes. We'll give you about five more seconds to finish up voting. Great, thanks for sharing that information. I'm gonna go ahead and close that and then share the results with you so you can see what everybody's thinking about today. It looks like almost all of you, over 70%, are gonna look in more on the actual convention information, including the scholarships and sponsorships that are available. Um, almost half of you are going to take a look at the Nestle Scholarships for Study Abroad, um, and just under half are going to take, at this, take a look at the SCOLT conference details. We also have 17% of you who said you're going to look at the NADSFL uh, annual meeting information, and 3%, so maybe one or two people, who are going to take a look at the NCLC call for proposal. Great. Thank you so much. We'll go ahead and hide that. There we go. And we'll move ahead. Next up is our news to use for the state level. Here I want to talk about the Flank Fall Conference Information and Scholarships, uh, the Flank Member Mini Grants, and the NC German Immersion Weekend. Starting with the Flank Fall Conference, um, I start with that because Flank is the Foreign Language Association of North Carolina. Um, that is our state organization. So once again, we've got ACTFL as our national one, SCOLT is our regional one, and Flank, of course, as our state. Uh, organization for World Languages. Uh, Flank 2019, as you can see, has the theme, What's Your Piece of the Puzzle? Uh, it will be happening at uh, in Winston-Salem at the Marriott Embassy Suites on October 25th and 26th of this next month. Registration is open on the website at www.flank.org slash fallconference, and the registration includes 50-minute sessions and research roundtables that are available throughout those two days. There are also three-hour workshops um, that you can sign up for in addition to your registration, um, and those happen on Friday evening and Saturday afternoon. And there are pre-conference webinars on the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday preceding the conference, and the pre-conference webinars are actually included in your conference registration fee. I'd encourage you to think about what you might learn from the Flank Conference and to know that there are a lot of registration options available, including things like reduced registration rates for um, new teachers um, and for others who are attending the Flake Conference. Let's talk a little bit about those uh, scholarships as well. Um, one of the things that Flank offers is beginning teacher scholarships. And these are available to K-12 teachers in their first, second, or third year of teaching specifically. Um, the conference uh, or the scholarship includes the registration fee, the reduced registration fee of $70 um, for new teachers and one workshop at no cost, so it covers all of that. You can submit your application online using the links you see on the screen here but are, that are also in the notes, and those are all due by Tuesday, October 1st, so that's coming up in a couple of weeks um, for us. In addition, uh, there's also another Flank Scholarship, the Flank Mitchell Buck Scholarship. This is specifically for students who are in their final year of a World Language Teacher Licensure Program at any North Carolina college or university. This is a $1,000 award. Uh, the winner is selected um, once all applications are in and each applicant has had a phone or online interview to determine the one student they want to award this to. Again, you can submit this application online with the links there. Um, and it is also due by Tuesday, October 1st, just like the beginning teacher scholarships. Finally, from FLANK, um, and, and something that comes after the conference, um, is the FLANK member mini-grants. These are $500 um, awards for projects that help promote language education in North Carolina. All current FLANK members are eligible, including um, K-12 teachers and administrators, university instructors, and representatives of local professional organizations or nonprofits that promote language teaching in our state. So, for example, we have a lot of North Carolina chapters of French teachers, German teachers, Chinese teachers, Spanish teachers, etc., and all of those groups would also be eligible to apply for a project or representatives from them. There are a number of things you can do with these projects, uh, including things like advocacy for foreign language teaching and learning, um, enhancement of students' foreign language proficiency and cultural competency, uh, professional development for teachers, uh, enhancement of foreign language teacher education, and other projects that promote foreign language teaching and learning. You can get additional details about the mini-grants and the application online, and those are all due by Friday, November 15th. 
Just so you know, if you attend the Flank Conference in October, you automatically become a Flank member for one year, and so you would be eligible to apply for a mini-grant if you were interested. Next up in our state updates is the North Carolina German Immersion Weekend. Uh, this weekend is for advanced German students. Um, it takes place November 8th and 9th this year at Camp Caraway near Asheboro, North Carolina. The theme is Sport Unites the World and it is $75 per student. Uh, information including the form, payment information, a parent letter and so forth are available on the um, AATG of North Carolina website. AATG is the American Association of Teachers of German and this is our North Carolina chapter. That information is all due by Monday, October 14th so that they can prepare information for students. Um, during this um, North Carolina German Immersion Weekend, the goal is that all students speak German during the entire event. They work cooperatively with other students and teachers and participate in activities like uh, get acquainted games, group projects, a photo scavenger hunt, a quiz bowl, uh, songs and s'mores around a campfire, movies and so forth, all in German. So really a chance to use their German language proficiency. In the notes as well, I have links to this information so you can access this if you need it, uh, as well as the two people who are responsible for this uh, this year, two teachers from Providence High School in uh, the Charlotte-Mecklenburg schools. So please check out that information if you're interested. All right, that brings us to the end of our state updates. I'm going to go ahead and run this poll question. Um, which of the news items will you use or share before Friday? Will it be the Flank Fall Conference Registration, the Flank Beginning Teacher Scholarships, the Flank Mitchell Buck Scholarship, the Flank Member Mini Grants, or the NC German Immersion Weekend Information? Once again, this is a check all that apply to your situation. And I'll go ahead and launch that question and take a look at our questions in the questions box. You're definitely getting faster at voting on these poll questions. We're going to take about 10 more seconds for you to finish up. All right. Thank you for sharing uh, your responses. I'm going to go ahead and close out and then share what everyone had to say today. All right, it looks like well over half of you, 71% are going to be sharing the fall, uh, Flank Fall Conference registration information. Um, almost 40% want to take a closer look and share the Flank member mini grants that are available. Um, almost 30% want to look at the Flank Beginning Teacher or BT scholarships. A little over 10% are going to take a look at the Flank Mitchell Buck scholarship and a little over 10% are also going to share the North Carolina German Immersion Weekend information. Great. So there's a lot there happening at the state level, and I hope you'll get a good use out of that and be able to share that with your colleagues um, and, and programs and so forth who might be interested. All right. The next section of our webinar today is what I call Professional Development or PD to go. Um, this is an opportunity for us to look at a professional de development resource that you could use in your local professional development and to work a little bit with it so that you can think about how best to use it with the audience that you have. Oh, I'm going to pause for a minute. We've got a quick question. Where are the notes? Um, the notes that I keep talking about are the notes in the slides. So when I post the slide set, you'll be able to see all the notes um, in any given PowerPoint or Google slide presentation, there's a notes section where you can put a lot of information, including direct links, and those are all in there. Um, I try to get the slides posted almost immediately, and I'll tell you later on where those are posted so you can access them even uh, this afternoon or this evening if you're interested. All right, so let's look at our PD to go. Um, one of the things that I hear a lot is that it would be great if we could take a look at articles and, and things that are available for free that you could use in your local professional development um, quickly and that you know are good, solid um, resources for implementing world language standards effectively. So that's what we're going to do with the pd to go feature in this year's webinar series. 
In the PD to go, um, what we've decided to do is to use Actful's the language educator sample articles, and that's because these are a really good resource. There's always one free article per issue since 2010. The language educator is designed for K-12 educators. It is what we call a practitioner journal or magazine. Um, Actful does in fact also have a research journal called the Foreign Language Annals, but the language educator features articles that talk about teaching language in K-12 classrooms, sometimes in higher education, but always very practical teaching and practice questions that are being addressed. The articles we're selecting for this series are going to focus on classroom best practices and effective implementation of world language standards. These articles are always written by experienced educators um, from across the country, and some of them even are North Carolina educators and they apply to a variety of language programs and perspectives. So whether we're talking about classical language programs like Latin, dual and heritage language programs like heritage languages or uh, dual language immersion, or modern language programs, um, either alphabetic languages, logographic languages like Chinese and Japanese, or visual languages like American Sign Language, the things that we're going to learn about by using these sample articles will be applicable in some way to all of them. So what I've got up here on the screen is showing you where we get these. Um, these are the sample articles. As you can see, the Language Educator has been published since 2010. And on this page you see here, which is on the actful.org slash publications, and it goes to their Language Educator space. Um, you see the left-hand side navigation bar shows you the Language Educator information and the sample articles. And so that's just a quick screenshot of it. I want you to make sure you know you can go to that whenever you need to to get the article we're going to talk about today or any other articles um, that are of interest to you from the Language Educator. Just so you know, when you are an Actful member, you can choose to get the Language Educator as a regular subscription. There are usually four editions per year, sometimes more depending on the year. Um, and what that also allows you as an Actful member is to access not just the sample articles, but in fact to log in and access the issues available to members, as it says on the left-hand side. And that's where you'd have access to the entire um, edition that's posted. But we're just going to focus on the, the free sample articles because I know that's something everyone can access whether you're an Actful member or not. Give me just a second. We are having a few little tech problems. One thing that I think is important when we talk about PD to go or have something like this is that you think of it as quick opportunities or fast food, if you will, to go for professional growth and a variety of PD settings. I know that um, some of you are probably the only language teacher in your school or even district and others of you maybe have colleagues who teach either uh, different languages or even the same languages. And so there are a lot of different PD settings that are happening across the state. Just some examples on the screen are things like district, school, team, or department meetings where you might be able to take an article like this and quickly work through it together as a way to help everyone grow. There are also maybe trainings you do for specific groups, for example, your new world language teachers or maybe emerging leader teachers who have to think about offering PD to colleagues. You could use this article uh, for groups like professional learning communities or professional learning teams, PLCs and PLTs, because again, it's designed to be something you can use quickly, um, but is very focused on a particular need. You might want to use it in coaching or mentoring sessions to focus on a particular topic. And one of the reasons I've chosen this topic today is because target language use is such a critical um, thing in our profession. You might also want to incorporate these articles into other PD, such as online or blended courses you offer, maybe a conference or meeting study group that you have, or there might be other examples that you're thinking of. So I'm going to pause for a moment and get, ask you to just get in mind, what is a PD group that you're a part of or could be a part of that you could use something like an article like this in? I'll just pause for a moment and let you think about that, and then we'll go on and talk about this particular article.
All right. I hope you've got a group in mind, even if it's just yourself, maybe, and one other colleague at some point. That's still a group. So let's talk about today's selection. Today for our sample article, I chose the one um, from Octo the October 2012 edition of the Language Educator. It's called Going for 90% Plus, How to Stay in the Target Language. Um, I hear a lot of questions about how it's possible for, for teachers to stay 90% in the target language they're teaching, how that looks in different types of programs and with different ages of students, and also what that means when you're working with an administrator who doesn't come from a world language background and may need some additional instruction on what the expectations are when you go into a world language classroom that's implementing our state standards effectively. So I chose this article, even though it's, it's um, from 2012, it's still a classic article, if you will, and it references several things like the actual position statement on target language use that I think are important resources for everyone to be aware of. I did go ahead and add this um, article as a handout on your control panel. So if you look at your control panel, kind of underneath where your um, e-hand is that you would raise, or just above your questions box, you'll see a space for handouts. And I've uploaded this as a PDF. It all is also downloadable from the site you see there online that you can access. But this is a way for you to get that and download it and have a copy for yourself. I'll pause for a moment. Please go ahead and raise your hand if you have found the handouts box on your control panel and you see the article or, or have been able to download it from there. Just go ahead and let me see your hand raised. All right. It is in that space, like I said, so it's available here. I will post it with our materials from this webinar as well. And then, of course, you always have the link to it and you saw where to get it. So we're all set there. Excellent. Thank you so much. I see somebody who says uh, they like this article. I do, too, because it's a really good way to kind of sum up how to use, how to stay in the target language. And it has some incredible strategies and things from, from teachers in, across the K-20 spectrum. Uh, with some ideas that you can try in your classroom tomorrow if you want. All right, so let's take a look at going for 90% plus, how to stay in the target language. The actual position statement regarding target language use says that the goal of all world language learning opportunities or programs is to be 90% or more in the target language. And that's not just speaking, but it's speaking, reading, writing, signing, if you're teaching American Sign Language, uh, particularly reading if you are uh, teaching a classical language like Latin, because a lot of the focus is on reading, of course, um, and a number of other ways to make sure that even in an environment where English is spoken outside of your classroom doors, um, students can still focus on using the target language, because it's not just about you, the teacher, staying in the target language as a model for your students, but in fact, getting your students to use the language they're learning 90% of the time or more. So let's think about today's sample article in three different ways. The first is before or pre-work activities that you might do with this article. All of us know when we've had PD opportunities like PLCs or PLTs, it's good to send things out in advance that you're going to be talking about as a group. And, and many times you have that opportunity, but not all. Um, some of you today I know saw probably in the reminder for this webinar broadcast that I sent you a link to this article so that you already had it. So one of the things you can think about for before or pre-work activities are things like reflection questions on the titles and quotes. And notice I've got the, the um, first page, got the, our title there, but I've also got the two quotes that are in the article. So take a moment and read those on the screen, and I'm going to show you some reflection questions that might work well for this article. Now, one of the things that's good about these reflection questions is it gets the person, the teacher, to think about how this already looks in his or her classroom. It also helps them focus on, perhaps, how it looks in others' classrooms that they may be familiar with. So there's no judgment there. This is just a self-reflection on what do we know about this, what is true about this quote or not for us, um, and what evidence do we have from classes when we think about teaching and using the target language. You can also ask um, participants to analyze the visuals in this article. 
For example, what do the pictures tell us about the topic at hand? And how do these com picture, pictures compare and contrast to what we see in classes happening around us? One of the things that's kind of nice about the language educator articles in general is that they always include a variety of teachers. And so you see different pictures and, and even pictures of students that show how diverse our profession and our teaching environments are. Obviously, you could give some reading assignments at your before or pre-work activities too. Um, so you could ask participants if you think they have time to go ahead and read the article or read some portion of it so that they're prepared to get started as a PD activity when they get to that opportunity. And of course, you might have other ideas about what you would do as before or pre-work activities. So one thing I want you to do now is to share what you're thinking about how you might use this article for and, and do before or pre-work activities. So if you would like to share that, you can raise your e-hand to be unmuted and I will let you share that uh, out loud with everyone. You can also type in the question box what you might do for your pre-work on this article. So I know some people are shy about um, just speaking out, but I will look for hands raised. All right. Uh, and the system is telling me hands been raised for a while. So, Sarah, it says your hand is raised. Do you have something to share with us? You're unmuted, so you could speak. All right, looks like Sarah's mic is not working, no worries. Um, Amy has offered that um, she would ask participants to read the section title and then ask them what words jump out and grab their attention right away. So that's a good idea because then that gives them an opportunity to read a little bit, but not a lot unless they have some extra time, but then really think about what jumps out at them or what makes an impression on them. All right, Diana has said that she might ask participants to share their personal experiences about this topic, staying in the target language. Um, and um, Casey has known that she would have them do a skim and scan for headings as a pre-work uh, activity or a before activity. All right. Roger, I see your hand is raised too. You're unmuted. Do you want to share out loud? <laughs> Yeah, one, one idea that I had was thinking of like how it can be used on day one, even in, in a beginner class. Yeah, that's an important thing to consider because there are people who think, well, you can't start using target language on day one, but in fact you can. And so this article is a good way to think about how you can do that and really get teachers looking at what strategies would help with that. All right. Rebecca said um, she would ask participants to recount an experience they've had with this idea of staying in the target language, maybe in their own educational experiences. That's always a good idea because that gets um, teachers to reflect on what's worked. And Ingrid said she would share her personal experience on this topic and then ask if anyone can share theirs. So sharing first and then getting others to follow suit. Just kind of what we're doing here and I appreciate all of you chiming in and sharing your ideas. Emily said um, she would ask them to share what challenges they've had first and then go forward from there. So start with the challenges um, and then start talking about what are some solutions to those challenges. All right. Uh, Marisol said she'd have participants Google the title and see what other resources they could find about the topic. All right. And then we have a couple of people sharing actually how you might uh, stay in the target language with students and offering some classroom strategies. So we're going to save those for a little later. But thank you for sharing. So those are just some, some before and pre-work activities and suggestions and ideas that you can think about about using this article in your PD to go opportunities. 
All right, so let's move on then to the during or in session activities with this article uh, in your professional learning group. Here are some things that you might be able to do or might want to do. You could discuss responses to the reflection questions on titles or quotes or section headings or Googling that you had done before. You could share an analyses of the visuals and maybe even ask um, people to include photos or videos from their own classes to share and think about this idea of staying in the target language. What does it look like? You could read together or jigsaw the sections of the article. One thing that's nice even about a short article is you have these subheadings and so forth, and so you can sort of break the article apart, if you will, so that different people are only reading small sections and then reporting back to the whole group, and by that way you sort of put the puzzle together or jigsaw an activity in PD. You could also examine the insets. If you look through this article, you'll see there are several different insets. Uh, one of them is called Know the Actual Position Statement on this topic. One is on resources or additional resources. One's called I Need to Use English or Do I? And then there's one that says some strategies to get students speaking the language. Because like we said, it's not just about the teacher 90% in target language, but in fact the students as well. You can also focus on the voices of the teachers who are quoted in the article. You may notice, once you get a chance to read this article in detail, that we have teachers literally from elementary, middle school, high school, and higher education, a whole variety of languages, Spanish, French, Chinese, Russian, etc. And so there's a lot to focus on here if you wanted to zero in on a particular language or program as a good example for the teachers that you're working with. And then you might have other ideas of how to use this article when, when you're having your in-session activities with teachers. So once again, I'm going to ask you to raise your e-hand to be unmuted or type in the question box about what you might do for in-session activities on this article. All right, I can see that folks are already sharing. Thank you so much. Uh, Diana said um, we might request uh, them to find videos of speaking the target language online and share them with the rest of the team because you could probably do even good and bad examples of that. So that would be a good thing to do. Uh, Roger said during a PD session, teachers could practice techniques to stay in the target language with each other, especially with those who don't speak a given language. And that's always an advantage when you have a very uh, linguistically diverse group of teachers. Um, many of us, like we said, are probably uh, the only teacher of a particular language, let's say, in our school or sometimes in our district. And so if you're working with teachers of other languages, you can really use that to your advantage. And you often find that teachers, language teachers, like to learn new languages, so it's a good opportunity for you to practice staying in your target language and making your meaning comprehensible to them, just like you need to do with your students. Uh, I see Anna Spire has her hand raised, so Anna, I'm unmuting you to share out loud. I'm sorry, I used it and I don't have it though. Oh, that's okay. No worries. Sometimes the, the system does that to us. All right. Well, I do thank everyone for sharing. We've got a lot more coming in. Um, Rebecca said um, she could potentially have the teachers determine what the 10% um, would be that would require non-target language speaking. And that's probably a good conversation to have with teachers too. When do you have to use English and when is it better to use a target language? Or maybe there are teachers who think there are times when you have to use English when you don't and they could help each other understand that. All right. So let's finish up then with thinking about after or follow-up activities for using this article in professional development. You could have teachers create a resource list for target language use to be shared locally. There was a resource inset in that article, but since the article is from 2012, obviously checking up on that um, and make sure those resources are still good might be a, a good thing to do. And you might find additional resources that are not mentioned in the article that have come along since then. You could have each person post on social media or in some kind of shared learning space. Things like the top three quotes from the article and their reasons for liking those quotes. Why did they stand out to them? Or the most useful classroom strategy from the article, an example of, of how to use that in a classroom. How would it actually look in their classrooms? 
You could also ask them to have find one additional resource on target language use that they found online. Um, there are several more websites now that are mentioned that resources, and there are a lot of blogs now, I notice, um, that we share sometimes as classroom resources on our NCDPI World Languages Facebook page that focus on target language use in the classroom. And so they might be able to know some of those and really get into that. And then again, you might have other uh, activities that you would have them do. And so once again, I'll ask you to share. And this is where I'm also going to share what people had said they do with students to stay in the target language. Because one of the things you could do for a follow-up activity is to ask teachers to share what exactly it is they do with students to stay in the target language, and then share a video or, or pictures or you know an example of how that looks, maybe in a lesson plan that their colleagues could learn from. Um, and so with that, we have several um, people offering ideas about how to get students to stay in the target language. Uh, Anna um, says that she would show students a short target language video related to the topic so that they start with comprehensible input in the target language. Maria says she um, starts greetings on day one and how to answer back. So because students have to greet each other every day, that's something you can do on day one of any world language class. Lorraine says that before she teaches classroom objects vocabulary or any other kind of vocabulary, she gives the students a paragraph to read that tells the various things that are in, for example, a student's backpack. They don't understand the text until they've learned the vocabulary, but then they are asked not to translate the reading, but to draw the objects they found in the book bag and list in, in French, that's the language she teaches, these objects all within keeping in the target language. So that's a nice idea too, and you'll see when you read that article that some of the strategies do in fact ask your students to provide a visual, either by drawing or maybe using um, pictures off their phones and things like that if they're able to use their cell phones. So there's a lot of things students can do they wouldn't necessarily have them speaking the language yet, but they are staying in the target language. Um, Natalie says that she would ask students to focus on the cognate, show them how many words they already know using their first language, and that certainly works well in languages like Spanish and French and Romance languages, Italian for example, as well as German and other languages that, that share a lot of cognates with English. Other ideas or other folks who want to speak out? Uh, Cynthia, you've got your hand raised. I've unmuted you. You want to go ahead and share what you would do for the after or follow-up activities? Sure. I hope that the microphone is on. Can you hear me? Yes, you're loud and clear. Awesome, awesome. So in my class, we do a lot of dialoguing. We do some dialoguing that's prepared between students, and I give them a rubric of the different grammar components that should be included in their dialogue, and that's a prepared memorized dialogue. And then later we move to more spontaneous dialogue, still using some of those same structures, but they're thinking off of the top of their head. So it's really enforcing them the mastery, the, the understanding of the grammar, but then also giving it an application that's unprepared. So when they're obviously preparing, you know, presenting unprepared, there are more mistakes, but they have more confidence because they know where they're supposed to be going with the grammar, with the language. Right. And so what you just mentioned is a really good way to scaffold that for them. And like yes. you said, to give them the confidence to go ahead and use the language, even if they're not quite sure of it, they at least have some basics that they can build that foundation on. And you gave a really good example, too, of how when we teach grammar, we want to teach it so the students are use it, using it for meaning and within context. And that's a good way to focus on what it is students need to know to communicate effectively, um, as opposed to the, the straight teaching of grammar like we used to do. We want grammar to be contextualized. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I see Marisol says that um, she would provide gestures for words or phrases for students, and those gestures for words or phrases that you're using, you might be able to share as a follow-up activity because um, you can, we always learn best from other teachers, right? And to know what another teacher does as far as gestures for different items could be good. Emily said that she, uh, as a teacher to follow up on this, would create a rejoinders card for student desks or their notes so students can participate earlier. And she even uses some emoji stickers for that purpose so that they can communicate meeting uh, with a visual like that. Good. And again, those kinds of, of items you're creating for your classrooms, you might be able to share with your colleagues in this PD opportunity. Um, and that's a good way to pass along information and help everyone start using the target language more. 
All right. Well, I'm conscious of our time. I appreciate all of your sharing today. I hope you've gotten some ideas that you can use uh, to, to set up this PD to go and use today's sample article in your work with others. We'll go ahead and finish up today with some reminders and resources for you uh, in your work. First up, I want to share with you about our 2019-2020 World Language Webinar Series. This, these are always on Wednesdays from 4 to 5 uh, p.m. Eastern, just like we are today, with one exception we'll get to here in a minute. So you see that um, we have our DPI World Language Quarterly Update Series. Quarterly means there's four of them. We've already done the September 18th one. The uh, other quarterly updates are going to be on November 13th, January 22nd, and March 18th. We will also have a World Language Best Practices Series. Um, and that will be broadcast on Wednesdays, the Wednesdays of October 16th, December 11th, February 19th, and April 22nd. Um, there's a lot of information in the notes about this, and one thing I had earlier um, was someone who asked about where are the notes. So just for a moment, I want to show you real quickly where to find the notes on these slides when you download them. I'm going to go out of presentation mode. Oops. Give it just a minute to bring back. All right, we just have a small tech problem. Give me just a second. Well, we have a tech problem, and here's how I'm going to fix it. I'm going to show you the PowerPoint slide version of these. I was working off my Google Slides, but that's okay. Here's the slide we were looking at, and you notice, by the way, in the notes, I can put all that I want, and you can access that. So there's information here about every single um, World Language Webinar series that we're going to be offering, and you see that there's even links to register for that. Our NCDPI World Languages Best Practices series that's talked about here, in this tiny little type here, but of course you can make it as large as you want, is going to be um, looking at details for specific programs and updated materials like the administrator guides for world languages that can be shared with world language teachers, school counselors, principals, and other administrators or stakeholders. And so um, you'll be able to access this. This is all posted in our slides that you see today. Um, and there are links to that information. And so um, when you get that, you can easily access that. But things like the administrator guides and whatnot are also always on our World Languages uh, Google site. And I'll show you how to access that here in a minute. All right. Let's go ahead and move on. Sometimes we have to punt a little bit. It looks like we're having some tech problems with Google, but we won't worry about that. Our next slide for reminders and resources is our upcoming professional development, or PD. This is also posted on the uh, K20 PD list page online. But specifically, I wanted to share with you on the left-hand side the informational webinar for the Learning Through Languages High School Research Symposium. This will be on Monday, September 23rd. Uh, from 4 to 5 p.m., and we are partnering with NC, they are partnering with NCDPI World Languages. So just like our World Language Webinar Series you see here on this slide from 4 to 5 p.m., you can earn um, a contact hour certificate for licensure renewal for all of these webinars and the webinar um, about the information for learning through languages. Um, I did forget to mention, I'm sorry, the Linguafolio webinars that are Linguafolio for North Carolina in 2019-2020. Those are coming up October 2nd and 3rd. Those are actually two-hour webinars, and you can do them from on October uh, 2nd from 3 to 5 p.m. or October 3rd, 4 to 6 p.m. It's the same content in both webinars, but it's a two-hour webinar. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I mentioned the informational webinar because even though that is an NCDPI World Languages webinar with renewal credit, um, it's actually going to be on a Monday. And then on the other side of the screen, you see there's some other webinars from entities that are partners with us, but um, control their own webinars. So the College Board webinar on building a strong AP Chinese program will be next Wednesday, uh, September 25th, from 2 to 4 p.m. The Cultural Services of the French Embassy is sponsoring a workshop in our region on learning and teaching with uh, TV Saint Monde, um, and that will be offered both um, on September. September 27th, which is a Friday in Columbia, South Carolina, and on Saturday, September 28th in Atlanta, Georgia. Same workshop, it's just a different location. Just so you know, I'm also working on getting things like um, those workshops from our um, embassy connections here in North Carolina as well, but they got pretty close this time, and of course we share 
those resources regionally. Finally, there's a Carolina Asia Center workshop for K-12 educators on Japan on Saturday, September 28th in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So what you'll see in the notes when you look at these is a link to that K-20 PD list page on our World Languages website. That's the first thing that's listed here. And then additional details about what I've got on this slide. All right, so that's where the notes are. I'm going to go ahead and um, put this back in presentation mode for us. Very good. All right, so also some reminders on opportunities for educators and students, and these are things like grants and training opportunities and, and scholarships and things like that. And so I have those for both educators and students on the website. Um, they, the ones that you see here on the left-hand side of the screen are the educator opportunities. Um, some have rolling deadlines, like you can get EU or European Union uh, trainings for your schools. There's a Japanese language project grant that's due two months before the project that you're proposing. There's a Scope PD outreach grant that's available. Um, and there's a Worldview to You workshops that are available. There's also the previously noted opportunities in our webinar, like the um, sponsorships to ACTFL and the Flank Beginning Teacher Scholarships. But also this fall, um, due on November 1st, is a Global Distinction Curriculum Grant for community college faculty. On the right hand side coming up on the screen are opportunities for students. So there's always the uh, list of upcoming NCVPS or North Carolina Virtual Public School um, cafes. And then there's some that we've already talked about like the Nestle Scholarship for students that's due October 30th. But in addition on that page for students you would find um, the NC Countdown to College for high school students, the U.S. Senate Youth Program uh, high school student application, the proposals for the TESOL and Applied Linguistics Conference for graduate students, and then the Ken Stewart Future Language Educator Scholarship for high school seniors. Notice that those all come with due dates, and that's part of the thing with opportunities. Of course, there's always a due date for the application or whatnot. Uh, finally, I want to remind everyone about our World Language Listservs. You can subscribe to the DPI Listservs by clicking on the link there um, and even on the picture about sign up for updates and then the direct link is in the notes. But we have four World Language Listservs that anyone can sign up for. We have one for dual language immersion educators, we have one for NC Lingbofolio, we have one for World Language Instructors, and we have one for World Language Education News. There are also other uh, DPI listservs that you might be interested in, such as charter schools, global education, legislative updates, teachers of English learners, and so on. I encourage you always to look for that information and get the kinds of details that will help you in your work. Finally, I want to share with you um, where you can find everything after this broadcast. Um, I always post everything on our World Languages Google site, which is what you see pictured there on the right-hand side. I have circled the professional development space. If you click on that, or if you just sort of hover over that, you will quickly find that there's a link to our um, webinar series information page, and that's where I post all of this material for you. I do say I'll get it posted within a week. I usually have it posted sooner than that, but just in case I have some tech problems like uploading our um, broadcast recording to our YouTube playlist, I want to make sure I give uh, plenty of time there. So you see there our NCDPI World Languages website link directly, or you can use the bit.ly link bit.ly slash ncdpiwl. Feel free to contact me always with questions, um, phone or email. I will tell you email probably works best. And we also have an NCDPI World Languages Facebook page where I post classroom resources as needed. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me uh, this afternoon and learning a little bit more about our world language uh, updates that are available as well as the PD to go.